initial call out for salvation is free, but once he saves your soul, it's going to cost you some stuff. Right? It's going to cost you some fighting. Right? you got to get full dog tenacity. Because every, de every devil from hell, every spirit known to Satan is going to come at you with everything he can. No holds barred. Your soul is... The thing in jeopardy then. See, freedom is not free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom, but it's fought through. Are you with me? Through effectual verb and prayer and diligently seeking. The Bible said every, every, every dawn of a new day uh, and every morning the sun rises up is a new day of grace and a new day of mercy uh, to get all in salvation all over. Again, see, God had, God, God had spoke to Samuel and said, A young man named Saul is coming. Anoint him to be king. It was never about the donkeys. Uh, it was never about the lost jackasses. Uh, it was about the one ignorant jackass looking for. It was never about the donkeys. Are you with me? It was never about them. See, oh my God, stay with me a minute. I got some great, some great nuggets right here. It was never about the donkeys looking for the jackasses. They just led him to God. Problems arise in your life for you to find God. Because many times you don't see God unless a problem arises in your life. Many times it's a thing that leaves your life that causes you to find God. Watch this. The things that are missing in your life are missing on purpose. The things that have wandered away in your life uh, that, 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 you, that, that you left untied because what you don't tie down on an altar will wander off. The reason the, whole, the reason the altar in the Old Testament had horns is because nothing wanted to stay on it. Uh, it was a bloody place. It was a bloody place of sacrifice. Uh, and when they walked that little dang lamb down to an altar, uh, he wasn't going to stay on it without being tied down. And whatever you got that you don't tie on this altar will walk off. Whether it's your wife, whether it's it's your husband, whether it's your finances, whether it's your health. And if you don't tie it on it all and effectually, fervently put prayer on it and diligently seek God about it, it will wander off like the don't. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. See, the things that are missing in your life are missing on purpose. For you to seek them and in finding them, you'll run head on into God. Romans 8 and 28 says, All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. The donkeys purposely walk off uh, because Saul wasn't going to find God no other way. You wonder why so much turbulence in your family. You wonder why so much strife and trouble in your family. Can't lay down and get no peace. Huh? It ain't for you to lay down. It's for you to fight the flesh and get up and eventually pray. My God. I laid down last night, couldn't even sleep, tossed and turned three hours. You should have fallen huh? and got up and eventually perfectly prayed huh? and you and sought God and peace would have fell on your heart. They stand there and say freedom. freedom. See, see, it was never about, they, 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 they left on purpose. Yeah, but it was God's purpose plan that they just wandered off. And see, you already knew it. You just needed me to tell you. See, you just needed me to tell you a bunch of jackasses will lead you to God. <laughs> Being around a bunch of hard-headed people will make you seek God. Being around, being, being around some hard-headed family that don't seem to do right will make you seek God. Come on, somebody. Being around some hard-headed, rebellious children that need God, they will cause you to seek Him diligently like you ain't ever saw Him before. And that's the plan. That's the purpose. God got the donkeys to care of. And the season that the donkeys have wandered away determines on how fast you can find God. The season determining how long your children are in the struggle, in the trouble, and in the addiction determines on how fast you can find Samuel. It's in Scripture. The donkeys purposely wandered off for him to meet Samuel. Because the donkeys wandered off, and God then spoke to Samuel and said, Saul's coming. That was all part of God's plan. Are you with me? Jesus, put your hands together and give God praise. I 
few years ago, I was praying over America, and I was praying for America, and God spoke to me to pray over it. I don't know why God picked some little old fellow from South Georgia, a, a, a nowhere place. It feels like a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody, and nobody listening sometimes, but I know they all. I ain't talking about y'all. I was talking about other people, not y'all. Amen. But I said, God, why me? And I got on the floor and I got wrapped up uh, in this old flag. Uh, and one reason it may have failed is because they call that old glory. Uh, and that is not old glory because God said, I'll share my glory with no other. Uh, you can honor no other with glory but God. So I'll call it a bunch of things and I'll call it blessed and I'll pray for any old glory because God won't share his glory with nobody. Amen. Not even America. God's glory is set aside for God. Yeah, Are you with me? And God spoke to me and God told me to pray. Exodus chapter 17 verse 15. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Listen to me. Jehovah Nisi means a flag, a banner on a battlefield. That is America's flag. Are you with me? That is the flag of America, the symbol of freedom for America. But the symbol of freedom for a Christian is a, is a banner, a bloodstained, Christ bloodstained banner called Jehovah Nisi. It's standing on the battlefield of your life. When the enemy sees you, he sees a white, slow white banner with the blood of God on it. It has Jehovah Nisi wrote on it. That's how the devil distinguishes you from the lost. It ain't your name. It ain't your money. And as good as you think you are, it ain't all you've done. It's not your accomplishments. It's not your last name. It's not your bank account. It's not your family. It's the blood of God. I got down and I began, I began to pray and God began to show me things about this old flag the strategic placing of the stripes and the Bible says by his stripes that we're healed are, are you with me? see there is seven red stripes seven of them red symbolic of the blood of God can I tell you, without the blood of God, you can do nothing. Without the blood of a lamb, you cannot be saved. There is one name whereby men should be saved, uh, and his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, and you can only get to heaven through the blood of God. Uh, you can only get to heaven through the blood of the lamb. Uh, it's not read by accident. Uh, it's not put on the outside of the flag by accident. Uh, because the Bible said there's a bloodline uh, that the devil cannot cross. Uh, and if America keeps God first, uh, the devil would have never been able to step in the middle of all this stuff. So, see, when, when they designed this, it just wasn't some crazy, crazy flag designer or that done it. God had this in mind. There is seven red stripes, symbolic of the blood of God, strategically placed on the outside, letting America know that if you'll keep America covered by the word and the blood, that the enemy cannot step in the middle of your stuff. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is the number of completion. Salvation will complete your heavenly yes. Salvation will complete eternity in your life. Seven is the number of completion. The blood will complete your life. It will save you from a devil's hell. You cannot go anywhere in God without the blood of the Lamb. Now, there's, there, there's six white stars. Are you with me? One, two, three, four, five, six. White is always symbolic of purity. White is always symbolic of holiness. White is always symbolic of righteousness. Are you with me? Once you get saved, God commands you to live right. Amen. Holy and pure. God was telling America, if you'll live right, if you'll walk according to the Ten Commandments and my statute, six is the number of work. God worked six days and rested on the seventh. Once you get saved, then you begin to live holy. It begins to work things out in your life. Six is the number of man. Six is man's number. Six is the number of man. When you get saved and man begins to live right, got to stand on the battlefield of your life. Are you with me? Now, this, 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 this blue thing is called a field. Are, are you with me? It's blue because of royalty. It, listen to me. When you get saved, regardless of where you come from, see, there's people in here that come from the bottom of the barrel. I, 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 I'm one of them. I come from a nowhere place. Are you with me? And regardless of what they think, they think we was all that, but we really, you know, we just, we just folks like everybody else. 
Just people just like everybody else. Uh, wasn't no kings, wasn't no royalty. But let me, let me tell you something. Uh, regardless of where you started, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and He smears His blood on you, uh, you are in a royal priesthood. Uh, you were bought by the blood. Uh, you are a brother with Christ, a son of God, a friend of God. And you ain't the same no more. You don't need to treat yourself the same. Uh, you need to act like this royal blood running through your veins. And the blue is symbolic of royalty. Now, the stars. I began to pray over this old flag laying in the floor. I didn't read this in a book. I didn't get this in a book. I didn't get this from a television preacher. I ain't heard this from nobody. I ain't ever heard this before. God spoke this to me in an instant. Told me to get up and get to write this stuff down. Now, you take the stars. Jesus Christ, the Bible said Jesus Christ is the bright and morning star. Jesus Christ is the bright and morning star. He is the world's supreme superstar. He is the first and original and only rock star. He kicked open hell's gates and walked in and rocked the enemy's kingdom. He is the original and one and only rock star. So I said, God, what, what, what does the stars mean? It, it, he is the bright and morning star. White for his purity. Now, I want you to watch these stars and how many they are and how they strategically placed. And there, there, there's one star here. There's one God. In spite of what Oprah says, there's one God. His name is Jehovah God. And there's one way to heaven. Heaven's one place, and there's not many roads that get there. Heaven is one place, one road, one way there. His name is Jesus. One God. Made up of the triune God here. One God made up of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. One God, triune Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all equal in deity, all equal in power. My God. One God made up of the triune Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Five is the number of grace. Once one God saves you and three God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit goes to working in your life and you find grace. Seven is the number of completion. It completes your life. Nine is the number of the judgment that you will miss and you can turn it either way and it works coming back the same way. God is wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in America. But God bless America. God, God did bless America. God has been blessing America. But you know what happened? America got America got too big for its britches. Uh, and America turned its side to God. Uh, and now God's turning its back on America. America needs to bless God. Uh, we need some effectual fervent prayers to diligently seek God. Uh, we need some prayer warriors uh, to step back on the battlefield of Christianity and start seeking God like you ain't never. So, God. God has been wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in America from the beginning. Even the flag speaks of it. Every color, every article, every symbol. You cannot turn it away that God's not wrapped up in it. You cannot count anything that does not have symbolic meaning in God. Even the strategic place of the stars. Everything God's wrapped up and tied up in the freedom for America. Are you with me? And as America has fallen... And slipping by the wayside, so is the church. Because they go in with the minority. They go up with the numbers. There's a lot of politicians that don't even believe in what they support. But it's a number thing. There's a lot of good men that sit around tables and eat with their family and they preach a different story to their family and their children on what they do on television. But it's a number thing. There's a lot of preachers that believe different, but their conscience has been seared with a hot iron because it's a number thing. Uh, and they and listen to me, they go, they 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 go and they go and with the numbers. Uh, I don't care if it's T D Jakes. I, I don't care. I don't I don't care. Let me tell you something. I can say there ain't no racist bone in my body, but if Barack Obama wrong, Barack Obama wrong. I ain't, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna vote for a man simply because of color. I, I don't care what color his skin is, I care what color his heart is. But let me tell you something. 
don't care if it's my own family. I'm ta I have turned my back on my immediate family for brothers in God when they've done stuff that was not right. Are you with me? I'll turn my back. Let me tell you, right's right. Wrong's wrong. You either going to live by this or you ain't. Jesus Christ was preaching a message one night, and he was preaching, and, 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 and the disciple that he loved stopped him and said, your mama and your brother wants you outside. And he took the opportunity to tell him a little something, and he said, my mama and my brothers are, are the ones that do the will of God. He stopped him right there. He began to teach. He said, let me tell you a little something real quick. Now, since you want to inter interrupt my preaching, let me tell you a little, a, little, a little proverbial truth right here. My mama and my brothers is the one that does the will of God. So if my mama is outside God, uh, and I got somebody in the church that's in God, uh, and they have a dispute, the Bible said you better take the side of the right regardless if it's your mama or not. That's it. folks want the blessing, but when the rubber hits the road to do the right thing, that's the separation of the church. That, that, that separates the men from the boys and, and the saints from the winds. The warriors from the warriors is just doing what it, what it says when it hurts. Righteousness is doing what's right even when it hurts. Righteousness is doing what's right even when they go family turns your back on you for a season. But they may stay off for a season, but you stay on God's course and they will come right back to you. They might, they, they might miss Thanksgiving dinner. They might keep you. You might not see Junior blow his five candles out, but they'll be back. I, I've seen all the daughter-in-law drama, all the baby mama drama, all the brothers getting mad, going to keep children from them. You better not keep nothing from nobody. God, they might take your stuff. You better not use children as a, as a hatchet to hack at somebody and use a relationship against somebody. God might just need another angel. People used to call in work. My young and sick. Man, don't do that crazy, gentlemen. Are, are you with me? You have what you speak. There's power of life and death in your tongue. And what you say comes to your house. First got saved. Went to mama's house. Phone run. Said, mama, so-and-so is calling. Tell him I ain't here. Just got saved. All of a sudden, it, it, before I ain't doing it, I was just about to tell him. She ain't here. I said, I can't do that. <laughs> are, are you with me? You gotta watch what you say. <laughs> and if you ain't careful, this, this, if you ain't careful, you'll be bought into something before you read the fine print. <laughs> Are you with me? You'll be an accomplice to something that you don't want to be. <laughs> Put your hands together and give God praise. See, God's wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in America. Are you with me? And see, I don't think nothing's gone too far to turn around. America ain't gone too far that God can't turn it around. You will me tell you what, if we'll begin to pray for the politicians, if we'll begin to effectually, fervently pray and diligently seek God for America, the direction of America, and listen to me, I got no enemies. Huh? Even in politicians, I pray that God save their soul. Huh? I pray that God save their soul, spare their life. Put your hands together and give God praise. God spoke to me about a message I've been preaching, and it's correct and it's right. But you can never get so you can never get so single-minded in a message that, that that people think that's all they have to do. And see, my message is here because the type of people that God sends us, you know, we just fighters. I'm just gonna go on ten. There's fighters in this room. There's people in this room that's all stuff. Incredible odds to get to where you at. We're a deliverance church. We're a deliverance center. We are called. We are called to pin down demons. We're called to set the captives free. We're called to speak word and blind eyes be open, deaf ears be unlocked, and have Having said that, I, I preach a message about you got to fight. I preach a message to keep fighting, keep seeking, keep searching. And you know, you know that God's not going to give you anything that you have to work. And the reason I teach that is because God sent those people that, that basically a lot of them just on a free ride, just want a handout. They want something for nothing because they had a bad time. They think they deserve it. They have the entitlement spirit that you want to just bless me because this happened in my life. So I preach a message that you got to fight. But I want you to understand, there is people in here that have been fighting. Out. And there is people in here, God told me that there's people in here that you don't have to fight no more. I because God is hiding you in a place uh, and God's fixing to bless you in a place uh, and you ain't going to work for everything you earn uh, that God's about to open up the windows of heaven and give you things that you don't have to fight for no more you already been sowing you already been given God's working a miracle of multiplication in your life I've been to read 
read a couple of scriptures and we're going to have an altar call. Joshua chapter 24 verse 12. And I sent a hornet before you. Uh, listen to me. There were some enemies that had something that Joshua needed. And God sent a plague of hornets to run the enemy off. Uh, God said I sent some hornets before you and drove them away. I have given you land you didn't work for. I gave you cities you didn't build. I gave you vineyards and olive yards you didn't plant. Uh, God spoke to me and told me uh, he said I'm about to give you land that you didn't work for. Uh, I'm about to give you businesses that you didn't start. Uh, I'm about to open up the windows of heaven and pour money on you uh, that your house don't have room enough to contain it uh, because you have been tried and trusted. Uh, I know you'll put it in the right hand they tell me off, you'll agree with me tonight. Believe it. Remember the scripture? If you'll only believe. Faith and belief is the ground that effectual fervor prayers build on. You got to believe it. Some of you ain't gonna work for everything all your life. Are you with me? The Bible says you can get to a place in God that when you have effectually, fervently prayed and diligently sought God, that God work a miracle of multiplication in your life that folks that give you stuff you ain't even work on. Now, I know I'm a, work, I'm a working preacher. I'm, tie, I'm tied up in, in, in the man working. Six is the number of man, and six is the number of work. The first thing God done, the six days of creation, God worked. God's all wrapped up in work. But when you have worked, and when you have sown, and when you have given, God will get you in a season that the miracle of multiplication will fall down in your life. I told God, I said, God, now I've got the vision, I've heard, I've seen where you want us to go and see what you want us to do. I've got a glimpse of what you want us to build. Got to build orphanages, to build retirement homes for people. You know, I'd, I'd love to be able to build a nice little home and, and put Brother Jill and Sister Vernon in it and just see them took care of the rest of their life. That's where my heart's at. Are you with me? I, I got a big vision. It ain't that I can't see. It's that I can't work it out on my own. And God said, where I'm taking you, you have got to get into a place closer to me in prayer to really believe for the miracle of multiplication. to get three jobs and work for the rest of your life and we couldn't make enough money to do what God wants us to do. Are you with me? So what do you say? I'm saying effectual, fervent prayer. Living right, seeking God diligently. And God to speak to the people because God's got people with the money. But He ain't going to give it to you if you ain't ever before. God's got, folks, God, God's got folks already in mind to pull some of you out of the financial dilemma you in. But He ain't going to do it. You ain't doing it right. God's got a man, and God's got a woman with a pocketbook big enough. All he's got, all he's got to do is tell them they'll scratch a check. You won't believe it at times in my life. You will not believe at times in our life me and her need something. We pulled up at this place. We pulled up here. We had we had we had purple and green and blue chairs. Sitting out there about to cry, God, what in the world are we gonna do? God, what in the world are we gonna do? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody pulled up. Wasn't even part of this organization. Wasn't even part of nothing here. Pulled up, and handed us some money. Said, do what you need to do with it. We wrote off kind of seven thousand dollars. Bought this sound system. Bought these chairs. In, in several different increments, God has done that to try us and trust us. Yeah. It wasn't nothing bought with it. You with me? What, that that woman won't let me eat a meal on God. <laughs> Ain't no suits bought with it. Most of my stuff comes from Frisco. You understand? God will try you and check you with a little. And when you have been faithful over little, God will give you much. God will test your heart and your motives with what He gives you. And when you have been found faithful, tried and true, it gets a little bigger and a little bigger. And before you know it, you're where you need to be in God. But nothing bypasses. You cannot get around it without effectual, fervent prayer and diligently seeking God. Amen, amen. Are you with me? And God wants to do it with the so-called jackasses that nobody else wants. That's right. That's right. God take a bunch of outcasts, downtrodden, what appears to be nobodies from nowhere places, from the preacher to the back door. And God will take you if you'll effectually, fervently pray and diligently seek Him. And the Bible said God will take a, God will take a man from the dung hill and the dust uh, and put him in heavenly places and seat him with princes uh, just to show the world. 
hand your feet in the presence of God. Look at your neighbor and say freedom. 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 